everybody, it's Sketch of Sketch TV, and I'm back with another commentary. Look, I'm going to be honest right now. I know this video has been commentated on to death, but I just wanted to so badly. You know, for someone who complains a lot about overusing references, DCE seems to use a lot of references. <laughs> Let's not kid ourselves here. RPGs are boring. In your opinion, of course. They drag on and on with the same mediocre type plots and styles. <coughs> Whether it be the Japanese fascination about underage protagonists on Epic Quest dealing with girly men and their own perils of angst and fashion problems, or the West's obsession with Space Age quests that try really hard to not be like Star Wars, but end up doing so. <coughs> Or this other need for another epic quest set in ye old medieval England, around the time Arthur accepts swords from water whores. I don't get it. Now, have you ever found yourself thinking, why not just nut the fucker before he can complete his magical demon summon thing? No. While stuck in the same tedious turn-based battle you had for taking one step forward. Now I do admit, only four RPGs can contain elements of goodness. You're kidding me, right? Those being... Paper Mario 2, Pokemon, which one? Doesn't really matter, they're all the same thing. Fantasy Star Online, and Fable. The rest are the kind of games I avoid more than Superman likes being near Kryptonite. So, I offer RPGs and HDG! Yeah, that was sad. Hey, <laughs> you got that right! To make them playable, enjoyable, and at the end of this video, I offer you three ideas if I made an RPG. <laughs> Better grab those recovery potions, this one's gonna touch a nerve. Step 1. Little less conversation. One of my biggest problems with RPGs, either Western or Japanese, is the game feels more like a storybook. That's the idea. I find myself wafting through page after page of meaningless dialogue and NPC character development that it's pointless. All RPGs do this, even the four I like. <coughs> to the point, I'd like to take an example from Fantasy Star Online. There is this one mission you have to collect sweets from the planet Rago. Okay, sounds simple enough. But before I can go murder some mutants and reach a tasty reward, I have to sit and read a full explanation from my client about how much she loves sweets. After page three, I put the controller down and said out loud, I don't care. See, usually RPG games have a little button where you can just skip the whole dang thing. This usually ends up either being the start button or something like that. What is the point of all this reading? In my experience, you should only do this much reading if you're in school or a newscaster, and neither of those things should be merged with video gaming, because video games are supposed to be FUN! And they are, but really it depends on a matter of taste. Not reading something that has more dialogue than a play written by William Shakespeare. At least it would fable they put voice acting in so you can listen rather than read. Provided they don't have the same amount of emotions as Microsoft Sam. Step 2 turn-based battles. Well, it wouldn't be an RPG without turn-based battles, would it? <coughs> but they are something that need to go. I never understood the point of everyone standing in a straight line and get roasted by a large monster without dodging it. Or how about when they take a large sword, ram it into something, and miss? Turn-based battles are the elements that artificially inflate an RPG to make them longer. Without them in side quests, the entire game would last about 20 minutes. Is that so? The only form of turn-based battles I actually had any fun with was the Mega Man Battle Network series. Maybe someone at Capcom had an idea. What if they could... Dodge! Jimmy! You've been promoted! So, the notion of a grid where you can move up and down, back and forth was so clever and inventive. Ha ha! Go fuck yourself, Final Fantasy! But wait, if I made such a nice comment about the Battle Network series, why isn't it in my fave list? Well, because it suffers from the instigation of turn-based battles. The RANDOM ENCOUNTERS! There are so many of them that it stopped being funny when you've used all your health potions, you still have one HP when you finally confront the boss of the area. Wow, if that happened to you, you must really suck at RPGs then. Both of these can be explained as thus. 
Imagine you are in a long hallway. At the end of the hallway is a bedroom leading to a naked man or woman, whichever is your poison. Every two or three steps closer you're hit in the toe by a mouse trap. You spend three minutes rubbing your foot in pain. By the time you reach the door, you're either tired or she's fallen asleep. See, usually in RPGs there's a little way to avoid random encounters, just as there's a way to avoid all those mouse traps in the hall. Step 3. Typical characters. Stop me if you've heard any of these before. A spiky haired angst ridden parasite aged between 12 and 18. <coughs> a short brown haired man with a wrestling physique. A male who dresses like a girl and sounds like a pedo. Another teenage thing but has boobs and very little clothing who is around the age of 15. Or a Stallone Schwarzenegger wannabe. The problem I find with any RPG is the characters are all predictable. So I usually welcome games that offer you a fully customizable character so you can be an ugly fat man in his 40s or a cyborg. Final Fantasy is guilty of this. The announcement of a quote unquote new title offers the same bullshit as the last one. <coughs> Or there are continued need to feed the FF7 scumbags by making something else that's connected to the holy grail for the feeble Fantasy 7 fans. Step 4. Adding RPG elements to something doesn't equal good idea. Something that never gets better is the notion of taking a well-established franchise which never had anything to do with rather pointless games and adding those elements to them. Mega Man X was a series I really enjoyed and it didn't have a lot of faults. Then came Command Mission, a game that could have worked better as a side-scroller shooter, which is what Mega Man is all about. As ironic as it may sound coming from me, I really have nothing to say on the matter. Not standing around waiting to be shot or doing the shooting. Sonic the Hedgehog seems to be that guy in college who tries to impress you by doing anything or trying everything, so he tries some chronicles and hopes for a Dark Brotherhood. Actually, in my opinion, Dark Brotherhood was a welcome change to Sonic the Hedgehog because everyone gets tired of the usual layout or um, aesthetic to a certain game after a certain amount of time. So, adding RPG elements to Super Mario, adding RPG elements to Sonic the Hedgehog, these were all welcome changes for me. When you really need to visit from some Undertakers. It seems the only one of my childhood heroes who made a decent RPG was Mario. But then again, he's practically been in everything except Super Mario Bros. 4. Mind you, the Simpsons game did make me laugh for mocking RPGs and how stupid they are. Which is a rare thing when something like The Simpsons can make me laugh. And finally, step 5. Playing World of Warcraft doesn't make you cooler than everyone else. This will sound familiar to everyone. You ever been in college or anywhere in public, and one of your friends begins rambling on about his or her adventures in the world of Warcraft? No, because most of my friends are anything but losers. The stories they tell where he tries to make out like he just won a fist fight with Satan and fucks Selma Hayek as a victory prize? Here is a pro tip for those people. There is nothing cool about World of Warcraft. Then again, the same can be said for MySpace, future guy coming soon. Most of these stories use the foreign language of nerd and are hard to try and comprehend. But there are some people who are very obsessive about it. Take this guy I knew once. He was desperate to get me in there. He even demanded I download the free trial thing. He stopped asking me when I offered to upload my foot into his anus region. <laughs> well, I would continue here, but the FF7 fans are casting some magic attacks against me. So, here is my ideas for my own RPGs. Oh, you can already tell this is gonna be fun. Idea 1. Monks on the Prowl. What? You play as a team of four monks on a vow of silence. So that takes care of the pointless dialogue. Where you defeat an army of heathens using unholy weapons and harmony hadokens. Idea 2. Chef in a easy. You play as a French chef who is pissed beyond the point of logical conversation, which also means no useless dialogue. It also just makes the game plain stupid. He is confronted by mutated ingredients and has to hack and slash into bits while staggering from their attacks. <laughs> and idea number three, Starshine. A little girl who is some star child thing, possesses no vocal cord, so it means you get the idea. Now this little star child thing destroys asteroids, metroids, hemorrhoids, and other words ending in oids as you press different combinations on the controller or shape the Wiimote in every gesture except the wanking movements. So there you go, an HDG on RPGs to make them playable, enjoyable, and complaint free. If you've been enlightened by this video, leave a comment. If you like this video, well that's just hard cheese. I would add something witty on the end, but I ain't got anything this time. See you next time, guys. Fatality. 
You know, I'm actually not going to lie. I do like a few of DC's handy-dandy guides, but the fact of the matter is it's either, uh, it, at least in my opinion, it's either a good one or a bad one. This has been Sketch McLean. For so long as lulls exist, so shall Sketch TV.